Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I'd like to introduce you to a wonderful little machine called the Cupcake CNC from MakerBot Industries. It's an affordable and easy to make 3D printer that can produce hard plastic models from computerized designs, and it's accompanied by an online vibrant community that's still emerging. So, what is a MakerBot? A MakerBot is a fully open source, affordable, and accessible 3D printer. It lays down molten plastic in layers according to a computer model to produce a hard, rigid result. The plastic, once hard, is tough and it's got a lot of useful properties to it. So, how hard is it to make? Two people can make one of these in a weekend. Not that hard. Um, the software takes a little bit harder to kind of get working, but there's a community of literally hundreds of experts online willing to help you along the way and get everything running. So, not that hard with help. What can you make with it? Um, you can make toys, machines, components, uh, tools. Here's a cathedral playset. Um, it's huge, it's beautiful. <laughs> Lego. Uh, there's a, a little uh, lathe that I was able to design myself, and importantly, more 3D printers. So, <laughs> you'll find these on thingiverse.com, where people share all of their designs. Um, Thingiverse hosts designs for 3D printers, other thing-making machines, and there's an implicit message there to share, collaborate, and derive all of your works. So, you know, great. Here's where it really comes home. Traditional manufacture, you need skill and you need time to do it every time, unless you've got a huge factory. Here's a, a whistle designed by Zago, a Thingiverse user. Within hours of uploading it, the first copy had been printed, then another and another, and I've got one right here. Um, so what if you can't model? There's hundreds of 3D models on the internet for other purposes. 3D, like application development and things, you can borrow them. You could get someone else to make a model. I personally um, am mired in live mousetrap designs after posting a $25 bounty. So <laughs> that's not all. Uh, once you've designed something, if you feel like selling a premium version, there's Shapeways, who can print and sell you know, and ship everything for you, giving you a small cut of the profit. Like you, you design your margin. They can print in steel and glass. Um, so then onto the culture. MakerBot Industries released the designs for this under an open source license. Technically, anyone else could take it, run off, make their own, and make a profit, but under the terms, they have to release it under an open license as well, so everyone benefits from their R&D. This spilled over into the online community. Um, the MakerBot users group and Twitter is full of people who are more than happy to come along, pick up your problems, and solve them for you. Uh, I've done it. Someone else really bailed me out with a broken part on my machine by sending a print of the part to me in the post. It's great. So. Um, Thingiverse itself has the same kind of ethos. There is a really easy licensing system built into the back end of Thingiverse. You just pick an open source license or a closed one if you feel like it. If someone else derives your work, it reflects that relationship perfectly. If someone prints your work, it links back to you. Um, so that's led to this kind of self-fulfilling culture online where people share everything. They're not afraid to get their work stolen or ripped off. And everyone really benefits from the ideas and uh, the kind of mixing part of culture that goes on here. It's fantastic. So. Nowhere is this more evident than the RepRap project, which inspired MakerBot in the first place. RepRap is a 3D printable 3D printer. Um, it can print in ABS plastic, same as this thing. And uh, I'm forgetting that one, so I'm just going to skip to my line here. <laughs> so, he said, fighting with the sheets. Sorry about this. A lot of work is going into a circuit printing RepRap, so it will be able to escalate you know, exponentially in size and power. Um, this is a kind of a revolution that goes through the grapevine socially, whereas most technology doesn't. If someone tries to make a lockdown DRM restricted printer, you'll just jailbreak your iMake and just print a rep wrap instead and be able to take off with that. Print one for your friends. Um, so it's a very enabling technology. And, uh, you know, in fact, the plastic is cheap enough that this technology is going to be ena enabling people who traditionally are outside the, fr the wave front of new technology. This could employ people who have nothing better to do but have a great imagination, um, which is kind of phenomenal for a new technology. So, uh, the, the GADA prize is a prize for a better rep rep, which will enable third world countries to actually kind of economically spur themselves and take control of their, their own innovation. Um, $100,000 for a better rep rep by 2015. Now, if you think about it, if everyone's got a China on their desktop, what happens to the original China, who we've got a lot of misgivings towards because of the way they treat people? Um, they have a huge power over us because they produce everything we need. And if we can start producing our own things or send printers to their people so they don't have to work in sweatshops, that's amazing. So um, 
And again, what about those poor people you've just given a printer to? They can produce anything that comes into their mind, share it over the internet, and suddenly you've got this system where everyone who's previously deprived has things like distillers for fresh water, mosquito traps. It's, you know, it could be amazing. So um, as it replaces the fax machine, uh, you're going to be you know, throwing spammer prints into the bin, but you could also be sending things to people across the world that could change their lives. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how that takes off. So um, you know, thanks, everyone, for listening to it. <laughs>